from a jungle beast man a jungle beast australia's plug to the sleepiest reviews in the country <laughs> man i heard you're at saba concert in melbourne last night tell the people how it was man we got a little little review of the saba concert right now we do as you can tell i'm fully awake and aware <coughs> what time what time do you go to sleep 5 30 a.m nice all right well, also, first off, uh, big thanks to Nasty Mars and the Martians. They were the support acts. Really dope. Australian? Yeah, Australian. A uh, lot of uh, confident energy about them. They were very, like, sort of jazzy. Yeah. But with a bit of soul, R&B, rap. They nice. killed it. I like that mix. They killed it. They were really dope. All of them were talented. Live band. It was dope. So, thank you, you guys. You did a... They had no idea who you were, and you were a really good support act. And, of course, now the Sabo. So, um, what's, before he gets on, what's the energy like? The energy? The way it started off, it seemed like they were unsure. Because Saba said, the first thing Saba said when he came on stage, before he sort of performed, I'm pretty sure it was like, I've always like released my music and under America, Australia was always the second most listened, he said. Mm. Well, I, don't know if, I don't know if it was that way, but he said that he just knew that he had fans here. Mm. But he wasn't aware of like, how many or how people are going to react because you know people like that whenever they come to Australia because they just aren't aware of how big hip hop is so many American artists do that energy was crazy you know how like crowds normally like there'll be uh, those few drunk people that are like might wreck it for a few people or you know when people try and like put their hands up or chant things there's always those few that are uns unsynced so it's not in sync none of that there was no one having a bad time good vibes and because it's a small venue yeah, good vibes. Because it's a small venue as well, people at the back just can feel like they're at the front. That's great. Like, I was probably three. Like, so I was right. I was right at the front, man. And it was... So, he did probably a mixture of about 50% of Bucklist Project and about 50% of Care For Me. Mm. And he also did a few... Like, he did a track that he did with uh, Chance, Angels. So, he did his verse for that. And he did... He did another one as well from something. Another feature. He also... Also, basically, after the concert at about three o'clock he also dropped a new track called, what called excited really so yeah so did he mention that to the to people outside no no mentioned it to no one so his team just did it while he was finishing up i think he did it i think he legitimately really enjoyed his experience that he was so excited that he dropped the track called excited i think he legitimately dropped it for that specific reason huh um so That's before big. i get to after concert, i guess i'll talk about so he started off with a lot from care for me so he started off with busy sirens nice so really beautiful way to start it yeah and it was really good because he came on with busy and then before he went to sirens that's when he had his first chat with the audience what did he what was he talking about that was what i was talking about before about like how he knew he had fans there oh, and how okay. to appreciate it and his dj was really good too the dj beforehand got everyone hyped up in a well and he, i could tell like he was sort of like unsure how people were reacting like he said people are going good but he could get them going better but like once like the more sub form, the more the crowd got engaged, like really engaged. Um, what did he do? He did like the calligraphy. He uh, did uh, broken girls. He uh, he ended with um he ended with heaven all around me and transferred it to life. Nice. Yeah. So and he did all my favorite tracks from Bucklist. He did Church Liquor Store. He did um, uh, photosynthesis. They're, a, they're two really phenomenal projects. Mm, they are. They really are. For such a young artist. Oh, bro. They're really solid and potential bro. classics. So, fuck, man. Enough about the tracks. Him, him, his energy. Yeah. He didn't stop smiling the whole time. 100%. Did not stop smiling. He just had a grin in his face. And even his eyes. Like, his eyes were just shock. Shock. And he, he, when they come down here. And he, he legit kept saying, like, I just can't believe the energy that I'm feeling right here. It's like, I just can't believe like how you treated me and the 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 set was flawless his his energy the way they delivered things on point even the auditory he added was like really well practiced uh crowd got super involved like he even said like i had a meet and greet beforehand he's like i noticed you 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 that's you dope. like he like that's really nice that sort of thing and so yeah flawless set start to finish really good and people wanted to come back on but they obviously couldn't because set times and then after the concert i was Fortunate enough to meet him, which was super, super dope. So I, had, I got to chat to him for a while. So let's break down for the people. We were talking about this before, but break down mm. for the people how that came about. Uh, so I was with Mabel Alice Hanna. Who have been featured. They did our um, Flatbush Zombies review with us. Shout out. And we were talking to the DJ. And, uh, he was talking about how with his set and also like basically his experience in Melbourne so far and what's going to be happening. And 
then um, people were getting pictures for Saba, so I was like, oh, well, they can't just take their own pictures. So I was basically grabbing the phone, just taking pictures of them for them. And this and was it, inside the 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 the, uh, the concert venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was inside there, and then eventually, like everyone was leaving, the screw training people out, and I I happened to get to stay back. It was awesome because I think my girl and Alice were still talking uh, to the DJ, and then Saba like had everyone finished taking pictures of him, and he just kind of looks at me. I'm just like. Oh, fuck yeah, I don't want a picture, I just want to fucking talk. So I started chatting to him, and the first thing he, t- he said to me was like, I was amazed at how much I felt like I was in Chicago. He wow. said, he said, he said, legitimately, he was just like, being here, like just performing, and the, the, what you were giving back to me, I just was blown away about how much I felt I was at home. And I was like, that's, that's huge prop. Special. And I, he legit wasn't saying that just for saying that. You could tell that he, he, he meant it. Now. He meant it. Yeah. So w- w- after that, what did you guys chat about? What did you ask him? I wanted to ask more about his personal tracks and how he goes about performing those. I know a lot of artists don't perform personal tracks because, you know, it drags him into that place. I said, have you performed Prom King before? And he said, I performed it once in Chicago and because it's such a heavy track, he said it just sort of drove him like into those feelings and back to that sort of memory. And like on stage, he said it was like really hard. So he just said, I don't think I could probably do that again. Like I could. That's but like, a really long one with, about his uh, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I thought it was interesting to ask because I'm always intrigued by artists like, because some, some of the artists' best songs, like say for Kendrick, Sing About Me, like there's such heavy tracks that like performing them, like it could make the energy of the crowd go down. As much as, as, much as the crowd fucks with those songs, mm. they're kind of like so different to perform live because you're like, there's a difference between giving you all on a track when you're alone for people to hear because it's like you're writing it but people can read it but people don't see you but when you're actually doing it in front of them it's like it's a very surreal and different experience it's a great point so i'm always intrigued by artists and how they go about that he's gone to he said he had a flight at 7 30 to go to berry because it's like a festival there berry is like a small town new south wales like a few thousand this morning he said what's berry like and i was like oh it's it's, it's not like good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know Barry like that? I know Barry, yeah. I've traveled through there before when I was road tripping. You said it's not that good? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure. It's just like a rural town? Yeah, it's just a rural town. There's a, there must have been a festival there or something. <laughs> How did he respond to you saying it's not that good? I think it was just like, oh. <laughs> Couldn't give I, him. I, I thought he was going to Sydney. Maybe he's still going to Sydney, but... but yeah, I think, it, I think it was the fact. I was like, what are you doing after this? Is like going to bed, man. <laughs> he seemed really wrecked. I think he had a big day. He, looked, he seemed really tired. Oh, I asked about the Chicago Sings. I told him, yeah. he asked what we do. I'm like, oh, we, we review music, Jungle Beats. We've done your album. I said, we gave it a good review. Didn't ask if he watched it, but I don't think he has. So I decided, maybe one day. And then I asked about the Chicago Sings. I said, but we really fuck with the scene. So I asked about, uh, how we, about Mick Jenkins, also how Mick's experiencing, how we chatted with him. I told him about how, how he really vibes with the energy here. Um, also asked about an artist that I really fuck with, like Alex Wiley and Kemba X, and why they haven't released music in a while. He said, oh, they actually moved from Chicago. I, can't, I think he said they moved to LA, I could be wrong. But he said he's not too sure what they're doing and what they plan to do. So also asked for like No Name, Smino, and their projects and stuff. So it's really interesting hearing about all these different artists that we fuck with, but they're all kind of in the same place and how they get along with them, how it's kind of like a lot of family and love there. Mm. Did you mm. ask him at all about his future? No, because it seemed he was really just like super chill. I didn't want to make him think too much, you know? Yeah. You didn't want to make it like an interview. <coughs> you wanted to make oh, it like exactly. a conversation. I just, want, I just want to have a conversation. Yeah. I think the only interview question I really did was the one about Prom King because I was really curious about that. Yeah, absolutely. I um, asked what he's doing for Christmas. He said he's gone back home. Chicago. Yeah, yeah, going back home with the fam. He also said that like before he came, flew to, flew to Melbourne, he was like catching up with a lot of family. And he was, he was kind of annoyed because he didn't have time to do his laundry. <laughs> so he flew over here with like, not that many clothes. That's just everything. a funny, <laughs> yeah. little, just shit happens. So he like went to College Kings, I think. Because they, you know, they always do shit for artists when they come over here. And he said he got like a few clothes, but they didn't have any shoes his size, so. How big's his foot? I don't know, man. Damn. Very big. Is there anything that surprised you about Saba or his performance? Mmm... Or was it as expected? Kind of, I guess as expected. He did mention um, his family a lot. I really like how he's very family orientated. Like there's a part where he mentioned his, I'm still not awake, yeah. But yeah, he, he seems to be very family orientated. Like mentioning like what they've done for him. 
And also just like, I guess in between. And also if you watch a Tiny Desk concert, his dad's there. Mm, he's playing an instrument. Yeah, and he looks just as young as he is. Your dad's like, for real, bro. <laughs> Had a really good time. Like I said, the crowd was really involved. Everyone, everyone was... Everyone was really vibing. Like I said, no one was too pissed that they, that they couldn't. They were fucking up everyone. When people are jumping around, people were respectful. I think it's really, really dope. I don't know if I ever performed in front of people. I would always say to people, who's drinking, put your hand up, make sure be respectful, make sure to do this. Like I, I'd always want to make sure the crowd feels safe. Absolutely. Because I've been to so many concerts where couples or people that are really small and fragile were just like, they, they aren't aware or they aren't. Travis Scott, we're they looking at yeah. you. They aren't going to be ready. I know you want to hype shit up, but you got to remember like, there's just such a diverse amount of people in a crowd. If you want to get a hype crowd going, get it going. Just make everyone else around there aware. It's as simple as that, man. It's a good point. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was just it was really warming just because of how you could just really feel how much he was enjoying himself. It's beautiful. Mm. Man, I'm, I'm happy to hear you had such a good experience. I wish I could have got a ticket. It was a great experience. He put on a phenomenal show. He seems like a really humble and really passionate person. And I really think he always, he'll be keen to come to Australia again. Oh, that's what he said about his... That's right. He said he can't wait to tell his grandparents because going to Australia is like a big thing for him. So to tell his grandparents yeah, about tell it. Yeah, about it, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's the other side of the world. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. He said he's wanted to come to Australia for like two years, I think. So now he's finally here. All right. I think he wishes he could stay in Melbourne longer and kind of see a bit of stuff. I really think artists should prioritize that more. I know it's hard with the tour schedule, but... Mm, you know. all, I think because when you when you go on somewhere for the first time as well, you're unsure. Because if you if you don't like it and you've already booked like three or four days, you're just like, shit, what do I do? You're in a new city. There's unlimited things to do. I don't know, man. I, people are different. I know. I know that if I was traveling, I'd I'd at least try and do a few days in between. But I guess if you've organized other stuff around it, then of course you have to shorten it. Up. Yeah, <coughs> the lack of an artist tour schedule is something mm. we both don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks, Sabi. You put on a phenomenal show. It was really nice just having a talk to you. you. You seem like a really, just, you seem to know where you're, where you're at. It's dope. Really fuck with your album. Fuck with you. You do good shit. <laughs> We're Jungle Beats, man. We're Jungle Beats. Australia's plug to the sleepiest reviews in the country. <laughs> See ya, Sabi.